Do you wanna take a property that looks like this and turn it into something that looks like this? In this video, I will walk you through seven steps to flip a property to make more money. Flipping properties is a great way to make money as a real estate investor, but it's important that you know how to do it and what mistakes to avoid, because I can assure you it's not as easy as they make it look on HGTV. As a bonus, stick around until the end of this video where I'll share the best kind of property to flip. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help a thousand people create a million dollars in net worth with real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Let's flip a property in 10 seconds. First, you buy a property that needs some fixing up, renovate that property, and then sell it, ideally for a profit. Sounds simple. In reality, a lot of people fail. And here are the three points why. Carrying costs, the selling costs, and the potential taxes that need to be paid when you make a profit. They don't show you those on TV because it's not as sexy. So before you begin to flip properties, you wanna look at the software that will allow you to run your numbers completely. I like DealCheck for this purpose and I'll leave a link in the description below to that software. To make things more straightforward, I created a seven step formula for you to flip properties. Step one is probably the most important and that is that you have to buy right. There's an expression in real estate that we make money on the buy. If you are overpaying for a property, it's really hard to make money on a flip. Think about it this way. If you're buying a property at retail value and then trying to improve that property and sell it again at a higher retail value, you have a very small profit margin. If you were to buy that property at wholesale value, then your chances of profiting are significantly higher. How do you find properties at wholesale value? Well, that's a whole other video, but there are many ways you can do this. You can find a local wholesaler or find properties that have been passed by by other potential buyers or by working with realtors who have exclusive or pocket listings. These are just a few strategies that will allow you to pick up properties at a potential discount. Step two is finding properties in the right price range. If you look at the median house price in any given market, you wanna be purchasing properties in and around the median house price. For example, if the average property in a market is selling for $500,000, you wanna be within 20 to 30% of that $500,000 mark. In other words, a range of $400,000 to $600,000. This will give you the highest concentration of buyers when it comes time to sell. If the average house price is $500,000 and you're buying properties for $2 million, you will have a much smaller pool of buyers. That doesn't mean that you can't buy luxury flips, but that is a niche market that you will definitely want to fully understand before getting into that kind of flip strategy. Step three is reverse engineering your numbers. You should be calculating your after repair value and working backwards from there. You should also have a minimum amount of profit that you would like to make. Honestly, if it's less than 30,000, I don't think it's worth it. This also helps you know what your offer price should be. For instance, let's take that same $500,000 property. If that is your ARV, your after repair value, and you know you wanna make $30,000 profit, you estimate your renovation is going to cost $100,000 and your carrying costs, taxes, and selling fees are going to be an additional $50,000, the most you can pay for that property is $320,000. If the property price pushes beyond $320,000, you know you have to walk away and keep looking for another property. I also want to caution you about overestimating your after repair value. If the most expensive property in the neighborhood you plan to flip a property in has sold for $500,000, I would not use anything higher than that when estimating your after repair value. If you exceed $500,000, that's a bonus, but I wouldn't count on it. Step four is securing the least expensive financing possible. Many active flippers use private money or hard money loans to flip properties. These often come with high interest rates attached to them. Having said that, some novice flippers will try to secure institutional financing for their flip projects because on paper, it looks less expensive. Well, this can be problematic because lenders may become aware of what you're doing and they may decline you for future loans or even blacklist you. This may also reflect poorly on your mortgage broker if you are using one. Sometimes if you have to pay penalties on conventional loans as well, it almost works out to be the same as using private money. And the process to secure private money is significantly easier than going the A lender route. My advice is to find and build a relationship with a private lender. And as you grow your business and continue to pay back loans on time, you will be able to secure lower rates with less security. Step five is to pick the right finishes to suit your end buyer. If you're flipping a property in an average income neighborhood, there's no point in putting in luxury finishes. They won't yield a higher sale price 
price. And in some cases, they can actually make your property harder to sell. Think about your end user when choosing your finishes. Do you need to go with hardwood flooring at $10 a square foot or will luxury vinyl plank suit the space at half the cost? I am not saying to cheap out on everything because that will show as well. But look at your other properties in the neighborhood that are selling and match the finishes that they've chosen to attract your potential buyer. Step six is to tighten your timeline. Flipping properties is all about timing and so are relationships from what I've been told. But I digress. The faster you become, the more money you stand to make. This all has to do with the cost of carrying the property. If your carrying costs are $5,000 a month, you can eat into your profits very quickly by going over schedule by two months. At the same time, you wanna set realistic expectations on your timelines. If you're planning to do new kitchens, bathrooms, flooring, paint, and move some interior walls around, and you plan to do this in four weeks, you better plan to work around the clock. The other item that snags most flippers, and it's especially relevant right Right now is to make sure that you can get material on site when it's needed. There are shortages on almost everything right now. So you have to account for this in your timelines and in your budgets in order to be successful. Step seven is to build a flipping business. If you want to be profitable as a flipper, you have to start creating systems around your operation in order to achieve economies of scale. If you plan to flip one property every couple years, it will be difficult to get good pricing on trades, materials, and financing. If you flip three to four properties per year, there are possibilities of finding savings on all of these items. The biggest frustration with most flippers is being able to get preferential pricing from contractors and subcontractors. Preferential pricing does not happen on the first deal. It usually happens when a contractor sees you as a regular source of income and someone who is reliable and trustworthy. That's when you'll start seeing better pricing and quicker timelines. So if you plan to flip properties, start thinking about how you can build a business around this strategy. Now the best kind of property to flip is a property that only needs cosmetic fixes. When you start getting into replacing all of the systems in the house, such as the plumbing, the electrical, and the HVAC, these systems all end up behind the walls and most buyers do not appreciate the money you've spent to upgrade these items. If you can avoid properties that require replacement of these items, your chances of being successful on your flips is significantly higher. If you're interested in learning more about flipping properties, I'm running a series of courses and trainings starting in the fall of 2021, where we'll cover this topic and so much more. Check out my website for more information at darrenvoros.com. If you have questions about flipping properties or any other real estate investing questions, feel free to drop those in the chat section below. And make sure to check back here every week as I release a new video on Tuesdays. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram, where I share more tips and tricks about real estate investing on a regular basis. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.